She's already performing her Amazon best-selling fable, Sune's Gifts, with dancer and drummer, Ajira. Please welcome to the stage, Amma. of the world. They named her Sune, Earthing, Watery, and Mune. Niami addressed the Magnus. Sune, you are imbued with the power of the sun. For this reason, you are spirally here that grows toward the sun. Take care of yourself, for the sun dwells within you. Earthing, you are imbued with the power of the earth. For this reason, your hair grows down toward the soil. Take care of yourself, for the earth dwells within you. Now, Watery, you are imbued with the power of water. For this reason, your hair flows like water. Take care of yourself, for the waters dwell within you. At last, wind day, you are imbued with the power of the wind. For this reason, you're here blowing with the breeze. Take care of yourself, for the wind dwells within you. You are all my children, made in my image. Take care of yourselves and honor each other's gifts. So in the beginning, all the Maggies were very responsible. So they did a wave dance. Every morning and evening, to make sure they rise and set. Earth, they did hip circles to put nutrients into the soil. And Watre did finger jiggles to summon the rain. Now one day, blew out gas disgusting air that carried seeds to new places. But one day, they all went to a river and they looked at their reflections. For the first time, they noticed that Sune was the only one with spiral hair that grew up. All the rest of them had hair that grew down. Out of jealousy or ignorance, they started teasing Sune. Your hair is ugly, your hair is ridiculous. Sune picked up a stick and began to beat every spiral of hair to make it straight with each left. Sune's headache, but Sune continued. When the last spiral of hair became straight, all the hair fell out, the sun disappeared. Sune, Earth, they water and when they looked at him in horror! That's not the whole story, but that's all you're getting today, my friends. <laughs> so come to my booth. 57 to pick up copies of the story. So I know what you all are thinking. You're like, this is a children's story. This is a fable. Why is she performing that among college students? I'm performing it because the message is so important for you, okay? Now there are many messages, environmental messages. But we're gonna go through the main message. You have a gift. The world needs your gift. So you must find your gift. You must nurture it, you must protect it, and you must share it. Again, you have a gift. The world needs your gift, so you must find your gift. You must protect it, nurture it, and share it, okay? People, this is just so important right now in this new economy. Many of your parents told you, just go to college. College was like the holy grail. Just go to college, get a job at a good corporation, everything will be A-OK. -okay. That may have been true for them, but the world is changing, so that may not be true to you. So one of the main changes is globalization. How does that impact the job market? Someone, someone, how does globalization impact your job market? I'll call on you. I went to law school, we used the Socratic method. Thank you. Jobs overseas, your job, high five, thank you. Your job can be set overseas, people. Corporations want to lower the amount of money they spend. And so they are shifting jobs overseas or to lower cost areas of the United States. So I'm going to tell you how I experienced this myself. I did all that I was supposed to do. I went to college, I went to Harvard, and I was an investment banker at B of A. I then went to the University of Pennsylvania Law School and the Wharton School of Business. I got all of these degrees, got all of these loans, got a job as deputy counsel and senior counsel at a major, major financial institution, and every day I saw it. We used to have tech people come to us when our computers were getting messed up. Guess what? Those tech people in New York, no longer. Now we call a call center in Costa Rica. Global legal support, the people who hired me they got outsourced to another part of the U.S., Florida. Now, I love you all from Florida, but I'm saying people lost 
their jobs. People with mortgages, people with kids. If you are not doing creative, specialized work that leverages your talents, your gifts, your passions, and your individual experiences, they can just send your job somewhere else. So I saw this, and it kept on occurring to me that I must find my gift, okay? And when I point to you, I want you to say, find your gift. So the universe kept telling me, then you would try it again. The universe kept telling me, find your gift. The universe kept telling me, find your gift. So people, I quit my job. It was a healthy salary, six-figure salary. I quit my job to become a professional storyteller, educator, speaker, etc. Very, very recently, okay? I've always been good. So this is how you find your gift. It's at the intersection of your talents, passions, and experience. So how is storytelling a talent? I've been entering storytelling contests since I was nine years old. Always loved storytelling. Always loved educating. Now passion. What inspired the story that I wrote, the first story now, to two books, my first story? So this is a sad experience, but I took my boy who's three years old to the barber shop, and I said, don't shave off all this hair to the barber. And the barber started to shave off all his hair. And when I said, please, what, what are you doing? Why are you shaving it off? He said, you have a real nigga right here. He's from the tribe. This is not pretty here. This is the best cut for him. And at the time, I couldn't really do anything. But I was like, why do I live in this world where people are bullying people based on skin tone, based on hair texture, based on you know their, their mobility differences, based on the way that they think? And I said, I have to do something about it. So I wrote a book, and I started doing bullying prevention workshops. And when my workshop became so you know taxing and so numerous, I couldn't dare also hold a job and take care of kids. I quit. So passion, people, passion. Now I'm going to talk about experience. I had an experience that particularly enabled me to write this story. So I grew up in the 80s, and during the 80s, there was a style that was very popular called the Jerry Curl. You remember coming to America? Let your soul glow. You remember that? So I had a straight curl called a relaxer. Eight years old, I went to Jerry Curl because it's a new thing. The hair person put the Jerry Curl on top of the straight curl. This is like chemical overload. My hair rolls out. Go home, it's like falling out, falling out. And people, we kept on putting all these chemicals in it, and my hair would not grow. I would cry in a closet. I'm bored, I'm so ugly, my hair can't grow. It wasn't until I stopped using chemicals to change the texture of my hair and embrace my naturally kinky hair, embrace myself as an African woman, that my hair grew. So I'm like Sune in many respects, people. So people, I had to find my gift to a certain extent, and you must find your gift, people. You have to find it, find it like your life depends on it, okay? If you want to be able to pay your student loans, what must you do? Thank you. If you want to be able to afford the economic comforts of life, what must you do? Thank you. If you want to live a life of passion and purpose, what must you do? If you want to live as the greatest manifestation of yourself as a human being, what must you do? Thank you. You must find your gifts. So during my workshop, we deal with real deal. Okay, we talk about your gift, we talk about your experience, we also talk about how you can reinterpret some of the most painful experiences of your life in order to be the fuel for your greater success. So I hope you'll join me, but what do we do? Okay, so we've cried, we've laughed, we've written this beautiful, beautiful paper, and, and I use research that's empirically proven, empirically proven to eliminate gender and achievement gaps. Why does it do it? Because the world has a story about you. The media has a story about you. They may say, Italian people are part of the mafia, Irish people like to drink, black people are criminals, like all these biases. Oh, girls are not as good at math. So when you write your own story, you eliminate that story. But afterwards, we dance. It's time to dance. OK, I'm picking people up, audience. If you don't volunteer, I will call you on stage. All right, come on. Come on, people. Come on. Thank you, my friend. All right, you some of you go on stage. Go ahead, please. Start playing some music, okay? Now, I know some of you go to parties and drop it like it's hot, so don't act like you know you never drop it like it's hot. Come on now. We're going to do the earth dance. Sister Nayera is going to put up some nice music. We're going to do, okay, some of you come down. We need more dancers. Come on now. We're going to do some of the hipsters. Come on now. We're going to do some of the hipsters.